Okay, let's go ahead and get started here. Uh, I have a configuration of three charges. This is a configuration that we've actually already looked at uh, when we were looking at forces, but right now I wanna turn our focus into finding E field. And specifically, we're gonna find the E field at a given point. So here, um, notice that you're being asked to determine the E field at point P and point P is given here as a point in space. So it's really important when you see these problems to notice that often you're asked to find the E field at a particular point. You wouldn't be asked to find the E field everywhere because that's a huge problem and the E field is a vector field and it has different values everywhere. So these problems are really, really well defined. It's important also to, when you're when you see this point P to remember that there's not a charge there. That's simply a point in space and you're being asked to find the electric field at that point. Okay, so that considered, let's go ahead and have a look at this. We need to set up our coordinate system, of course. So um, let's do that. And I'm gonna go ahead and choose for this problem, I'm gonna choose upward uh, positive y upward and then positive x rightward, right? So that gives me my um, positive j hat upward and positive i hat rightward because we're going to be using unit vectors here. So let's go ahead and um, set this up. Now what I want you to do when it comes to finding the E field here is I want you to draw a separate diagram of the E field at your what I'm calling your point of interest which is point P here. So I'm going to call that E at P. So E sub P is my notation for that. And I'm going to draw a little coordinate system here and on that coordinate system I'm going to draw the field. Remember this is a vector so this looks a little like a free body diagram, but it's not one. It is a vector diagram though. So let's now write the different electric field contributions from each of the particles. So first consider particle A. Now particle A is positively charged. So the electric field due to particle A is radially outward everywhere. So at the location of P, the electric field due to particle A is gonna be going straight up. So that, that'll be the contribution, and I'm going to call that um, E sub A. Okay. So there's no hat on that E sub A because I have the arrow representing the direction. E sub A is representing the magnitude or the length of that arrow. So now let's look at particle B. Particle B is negatively charged. When I think about that, I'm going to think about electric field lines radially inward. So the electric field due to particle B at the location of point P then would be downward. So I don't know that these are equal and opposite. I'm just drawing in mainly to figure the directions out and then I'm gonna label that with an E sub B. That's the electric field at P due to particle B. So last one here is what is the, to draw in the contribution of the electric field at point P due to particle C. Particle C is negatively charged, so again, what I'm imagining is radially inward arrows, all pointing towards C. That means at the location of P that the electric field arrow due to C is going to look something like this. So here, this is E sub C. Okay, cool. Now, I see that... Um, I know that I don't want to just leave an arrow like hanging out off axis without having an angle figured out. So now I see that I have to figure out an angle here. So that this angle, let's see, let me draw this in. And this is a distance that I'm interested in, the distance between C and then my point of interest P. This distance here is going to be A root 20. And let's call this angle in here theta. Okay, cool. So then this is theta right here. All right, good. So now we have an idea anyway of that electric field. Now we need to write it out in, into component form. So I'm gonna go back to my original setup here and um, crank out the sine and cosine of theta. I know I'm gonna need them. I see that this E sub C is off axis. So I know I'm going to need to split it up into components. So let me do this um, over um, up here. I'll then just figure out sine of theta. 
So go ahead and look at that right triangle there. That's going to be 2a over a root 20, which simplifies to 1 over root 5. And I'm also going to be interested, of course, in cosine theta, which is 4a over a root 20, which uh, simplifies to 2 over root 5. Great. Now I have those on hand. Um, I know that I'm going to be ready to pop those in. Okay, cool. The um, equation that I'm going to be using for the electric field due to a point charge, my general equation is, of course, the electric field, and I'm going to sub it with PC. I want you guys to remember when you're using this equation, it applies only to point charges, and that is the equation you already know, kq over r squared. This is an equation that will be one of your given equations for the first exam. So every time I use this equation, I like to sub it with that PC just to remind you that this is representing the electric field of a point charge, not any general electric field, but the electric field of a single point charge. Notice that there's no hat here when we look at this equation. This equation, like Coulomb saw, this is magnitude only. Direction, we figure that out just like we did. So, all right, um, I've got positive up and positive rightward. Let me then go ahead and express the electric field at point P. So first I'm gonna start with I hat, which is going to be E sub C cosine theta, I hat, and then I'll go to my J hat here, which is going to be E sub A, minus e sub b minus e sub c sine theta and that's all j hat great so now we just need to sub in uh, for each one of these we have our cosine theta and sine theta all figured out but we need to then figure out the magnitudes or express the magnitudes for ea eb and ec so let's do that now so i'll say where E sub A, now I'm just going to use the equation for electric field of a point charge, right? So that'll be K times the magnitude of charge A, which is 5Q. Drop the sign here. This is magnitude only. Divided by R squared. R is the distance between our point charge and our point of interest. So for particle A, that distance is just lowercase a there. So that's A squared. Moving on. Magnitude of field of B. Uh, at the point of P, K times magnitude of particle B, drop the sign, 2Q, um, over the distance between the particle and the point of interest squared. So that distance, the distance between particle B and point P is 3A, yeah? So that'll be 9A squared. And then last one, E sub C, K, um, C is magnitude 3Q, and then the distance between C and P, we have that figured out, A root 20. So that's going to give me 20 A squared in the denominator. Okay, so now I have all of my magnitudes. So now I'm ready to sub into this E sub P and make it like for real in terms of the givens. So E sub C, here I'm just starting with the I hat term, and um, I'm, I'll clean it up slightly here as 3kq over 20a squared times cosine theta, so that's going to be times 2 over root 5. That's all I hat, so that's my I hat term in terms of the givens. Plus, now E sub A, that's going to be 5kq over A squared minus E sub B, 2kq over 9A squared minus E sub C, 3kq over 20A squared times sine theta, which is 1 over root 5. And that's all J hat. So that's it. Um, that is my final answer. I'll change my color if 
put it in pink to let you know that that's really it. If I look at that, that's in terms of my given stuff. My givens were up here, K, A, and Q. So that is determining there the electric field at point P due to those three charges.